On September 9, 1943, a squadron of Dornier DO-217s roared into the skies with a merciless objective, annihilate the defecting Italian fleet sailing from La Spezia. Italy had just inked an armistice with the Allies, and their prize Regia Mariner fleet was scrambling to surrender to American and British forces. Germany's intent was simple but brutal. Stop that surrender at any cost. Equipped with the first precision-guided munitions in history, the Dornier DO-217 sliced through the Mediterranean air, their ominous domes and massive wingspans heralding doom. They were on a collision course with destiny. As the Italian battleships loomed into view, the German bombers initiated their deadly descent. Veterans in dive bombing and maritime strikes, these aviators knew the Italian defenses stood little chance. They bore down, unrelenting. In an instant, the German bomber's shadows enveloped the decks of the battleships Roma and Italia, the twin titans of the Regia Marina. Unleashed from the sky, Fritz-10 radio-controlled bombs found their prey with unnerving precision. Metal screamed, and firestorms erupted on the Roma. Panic surged among her crew. Already, a second lethal pass from the DO-217s was imminent. The fate of the Italian Navy teetered on the brink. For the pilots of one of Nazi Germany's most terrifying flying machines, it was just another day at the office. The Dornier DO-217 emerged in the late 1930s amidst a climate of escalating military preparation. A war unlike anything the world had ever seen was coming, and Germany would need a bomber capable of meeting the challenges to come. The DO-217 was designed as a superior iteration to its predecessor, the Dornier DO-17, colloquially known as the Flying Pencil. Its inception was underpinned by the 1937 specifications outlined by the German Air Ministry, which saw the necessity for a twin-engine bomber with enhanced bomb load capacity and dual functionality as a level and dive bomber. This initiative was part of a broader effort to bolster the Luftwaffe's bombing arsenal, ensuring it was adequately equipped for the conflicts the German High Command expected to happen very soon. The blueprint of the DO-217 was conceived in 1937 and 38 as an effort to supersede the capabilities of the DO-17, especially in terms of bomb load capacity, range, and versatility in operational roles. The first prototype took to the skies in August 1938, to undergo a phase of rigorous refinement and testing that would stretch into late 1940, before the initial production commenced. World War II was raging across Europe when the new, improved German bomber entered service in early 1941. By the outset of 1942, the DO-17 had become a notable presence within the Luftwaffe's fleet, playing a crucial part in various fronts and roles throughout the war. The meticulous design philosophy that led to the DO-217s was aimed not merely at enhancing the bomb load capacity, but also ensuring a broader wingspan and a robust structure capable of enduring the demands of warfare across the vast battlefield where the war was quickly expanding. The DO-217 was not a one-dimensional asset. Its design harbored the potential for a multitude of roles, a reflection of the foresight to adapt to the fluid dynamics of modern warfare. It was designed with an eye towards diversification, embodying capabilities for dive bombing, maritime strikes, and reconnaissance, later even serving as a testbed for missile development and precision-guided munitions deployment. This multi-role functionality was seen as necessary to improve the Luftwaffe's operational versatility, enabling it to respond to a wide array of tactical and strategic imperatives, and to match the ever-evolving combat aircraft designs of the Allied nations. The DO-217 was envisioned as a groundbreaking stride in aircraft technology. It possessed an airframe built primarily from aluminum alloy, which provided a strong but lightweight structure essential for extended missions. With a wingspan of 19 meters and a length of 15 meters, its dimensions allowed a blend of speed and lifting capacity. Powerful twin radial engines, each delivering up to 1,750 horsepower, thrust the aircraft to top speeds of around 557 kilometers per hour granting it the agility to evade enemy interceptors and reach distant targets in a timely manner. This range and speed would be pivotal during the Baby Blitz, or Operation Steinbach, aimed at London in early 1944. The aircraft had to cover staggering distances from bases in France to targets in England. Armament 
was one of the DO-217's defining attributes. It boasted a forward-facing 20mm MG-151-20 autocannon, paired with a combination of 792mm MG-15 or MG-81 machine guns mounted at various points, nose, dorsal, and ventral turrets, to cover multiple angles of attack. This comprehensive spread of weaponry made the aircraft a threat not only to ground installations, but also to enemy aircraft attempting interception. When it came to armor, the Dornier 217 didn't cut corners. Reinforced cockpits, coupled with armor-plated bulkheads, shielded the crew from incoming fire. The protection, however, was a trade-off. Additional weight slightly compromised the aircraft's overall speed and agility, which could have been even more remarkable if it wasn't for the added protection. Inside the fuselage, the DO-217 offered accommodations for a crew of four. A pilot, a co-pilot, navigator, and gunner. This setup aimed to distribute the workload during missions, allowing each crew member to focus on specialized tasks, thereby enhancing operational efficiency. Perhaps the most critical feature was its bomb bays, capable of holding up to 4,000 kilograms of ordnance. The enormous payload capacity would be a defining trait for the bomber, especially in high-stakes operations such as the bombing of Malta in 1942. During this campaign, the DO-217s were among the primary aircraft used to pummel the island's airfields and naval installations with devastating results. The adaptable payload options, ranging from conventional bombs to guided missiles, like the Henschel HS-293, rendered the DO-217 versatile for various missions, whether laying waste to industrial complexes or sinking enemy naval vessels. It soon became clear that the Dornier DO-217 was a meticulously engineered and highly adaptable aircraft in a theater dominated by ever-evolving combat requirements. Its balanced dimensions and powerful engines allowed for both speed and payload capacity. By the time the Battle of Britain erupted in 1940, around 200 DO-217s had been manufactured. Employed initially in nocturnal sorties, it was on the night of August 30th to 31st, 1940, that the DO-217 participated in its first major raid over London. During these merciless raids, the DO-217 would become a symbol of terror and destruction in the minds of civilian populations. Its ominous silhouette and unique dome would become synonymous with impending doom for British people trying to survive the Blitz. Its speed, agility, and armor had allowed it to do what was considered almost impossible years before, to pierce deep into the British Isles. Still, it was far from invulnerable to Allied defenses. While its payload wreaked havoc, the aircraft found itself beleaguered by British interceptors. The DO-217 suffered losses that reached almost 12% during the Battle of Britain, a stark reminder that raw power alone wouldn't cut it. Although not overwhelming, the losses were significant enough to justify making some considerable modifications to the aircraft to make it more capable of fending for itself against British fighters. In 1941, the Luftwaffe rolled out the DO-217E variant, which sported two powerful BMW 801 radial engines, significantly enhancing its speed and combat radius. This new version was battle-tested on the Eastern Front, as well as in the European theater of war. The Dornier DO-217 would go on to make a significant impact during the Battle of the Atlantic, serving as a critical asset to the Luftwaffe's anti-shipping operations. The aircraft became an exceptional maritime bomber, sinking thousands of tons of Allied shipping. These operations were essential in attempting to sever the vital supply chains across the Atlantic, which were crucial for sustaining the Allied war effort. By targeting and disrupting these convoys, the DO-217 played a role in the broader naval warfare strategy orchestrated by Germany during World War II. The DO-217's design evolution led to the E-4 variant, which became a key part of the Luftwaffe's Battle of the Atlantic bomber fleet. This variant was presumably better suited for the anti-shipping role, showcasing the continuous adaptation and optimization of the DO-217 to meet the operational demands of the naval theater during the war. By 1943, the DO-217 was also present in the Mediterranean, where it constantly fought against the Allied efforts to subdue and invade Italy. Even the Italians were using the aircraft with 12 DO-217s acquired by Italy's Regia Aeronautica between September 1942 and June 1943. Ironically, the Italian forces would now face the business end 
of the DO-217's guns. Italy was a nation on the edge. In July 1943, as Allied forces stormed the shores of Sicily, support for Benito Mussolini eroded rapidly. Arrested and deposed, Mussolini watched from his cell as his fascist regime crumbled. Two months later, on September 8, 1943, Italy publicly declared an armistice with the Allies, a secret until Allied boots touched mainland Italy. The proclamation invited immediate German intervention aimed at disarming the Italian forces. Within a short span, German troops seized control of key Italian territories. But a lurking quandary remained. The Regia Marina, Italy's naval fleet, hosting several battleships and a plethora of smaller vessels. Should these ships fall into Allied hands, they'd either be mothballed or repurposed against Germany. Germany's solution was unambiguous. If they couldn't have the Italian Navy, no one could. Squadrons of DO-217 bombers were dispatched to sink the fleet as it sailed toward Malta to surrender. Unit 3, KG-100, operating out of Marseille, unleashed a fleet of 11 DO-217s. Though the bombers were aging and no longer cutting edge, they carried a game-changing payload. Nestled within their hulls were Fritz-10 bombs, the world's first precision-guided munitions. Since the late 1930s, German engineers like Max Kramer had grappled with the conundrum of hitting moving naval targets from the sky. After years of trial and error, the Fritz-10 was ready for its combat debut, a moment that would send tremors through the Italian Navy. The German Dorniers found the Italian fleet near Corsica. Drawing upon years of maritime strike and dive-bombing experience, the pilots deftly circumvented the fleet's scant defenses. Then came the moment of reckoning. Fritz-10 bombs plummeted from the sky, their radio-guided systems adjusting mid-air to the frantic movements of the ships below. No evasive action could thwart them. Battleships Roma and Italia were struck with lethal precision. Roma disintegrated and sank, marking a grim finale for the day's events. Unabated, the Dorniers turned their sights on the Allies at Salerno, dealing heavy damage to USS Savannah, HMS Uganda, and even the renowned battleship HMS Warspit. The DO-217 had evolved from an awe-inducing bomber to a symbol of relentless German innovation. Even as it grew technologically obsolete, the advent of Fritz-10 bombs ensured its continued psychological impact on the Allies. As late as 1944, these bombers participated in Operation Steinbuck, a disastrous but telling attempt to retaliate against London's earlier air raids on German cities. From their first flight until the final surrender of Germany, these bombers covered Allied cities in a shroud of fear and uncertainty, and their feats were as much tactical as psychological. Their unique engineering and Saturday airframes made them highly versatile and adaptable, and they found ways to survive even when facing a whole new generation of Allied fighters. Though its late missions ended in failure, it encapsulated the relentless and daunting spirit of one of World War II's most versatile and feared German bombers. <laughs>